your name on it. Just put your name on it. That's all I say. Be a man or a woman. Put your name on it. It just clicked in my mind that if you just run through somebody's face, a lot of people ain't going to be able to take that over and 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 over again. They just not going to want that. Run through a motherfucker face. Then you don't have to worry about them no more. Harry Spears, my brother. Yo, Jay. And Andy Steinberg, my brother from uh, my Zion mother. Uh, they got a podcast, Spears and Steinberg, The Jew and the Jerk. No, nope. Aries, which one's which here? You know, listen, man, I, <laughs> technically I'm both. You know, there's, there's, some, right. there's some black Jews in there. Israelites. You know, yeah, I, well, I don't do that shit with the costumes. Them niggas is loud and <laughs> ridiculous. It's like I might listen to your message if you take that Pirates of the Caribbean shit off. That's hilarious. <laughs> I remember coming out of the subway in Times Square. I'm like, did you get Pete Funk back together? Dude, let me tell you. We were in Tampa, Florida. <laughs> yeah. T- and on, on a bright, sunny day. I'm sorry. Andy, let him finish. Jesus. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> they were, uh, sorry, they were on the street jerks. corner doing their shit. And I just went, wouldn't they make for a great alarm clock? Oh, you know, my just to wake, white, you know, just to white white folks up there in your bedroom. And the white pig and the devil mask. So there's a white hunking motherfucker. You up, Bob? Good. You know, so I just, I just, that'd be a great way to wake up, man. Because the looks on white people's faces are fucking priceless. Have you ever seen those cats going Yeah, by, but, but when we were in Tampa, they were standing out in front of Jimmy John's. So yeah, everybody yeah, gets yeah. a sandwich in, in Jimmy John's. In Ebor City, right in the heart of Ebor City. I fucking love Ebor yeah. City. Shout out DJ Mad Links. What's up, partner? Listen, man. Uh, Ebor City. Of all, I say of all the Florida places, uh, I love, because people go, where's your favorite place to perform? I go, I don't give a fuck if it's West Palm, Orlando, Miami, Fort Lauderdale. Because women in Florida dress like they don't like their fathers. That being said, uh, that being said, um, Ebor City, Tampa is the side bitch of all the Florida spots. <laughs> when, you look, when, you, when you know about the money and the cleanliness of West Palm, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Orlando. Naples. Yes. Uh, but but fucking Ebor and Jacksonville. Yeah, Jacksonville. It's just a uh, little skanky. Jacksonville is, I don't know, that's like, that's a Fifi bag. That's yeah, like, man. Yeah. I would say Ebor City is definitely like. Yeah. It's so funny. Yeah, <laughs> man. Almost those streets, people oh, just like pirates. Goodness. When no, drunk pirates. When, when, those, when those shows let out at, at Tampa Improv, I mean, it's a fun time, but it's, you got to walk around with a rubber on, man. <laughs> Even if you ain't fucking, just wear a rubber. Me. I'm not going to get AIDS again. Uh, <laughs> Crazy, man. I made the room quiet. No, when I got single again, everybody was like, hey, be careful. I'm like, what do you think? I'm like meeting these girls under a bridge. <laughs> but we'll say anything like to get out of wearing a condom. Man, listen. Be like, hey, man, she's from Minnesota. Fuck. Hey, what are the chances? Her dad's a dentist, man. <laughs> Ebor City, I'm so happy you hit on that. Yeah, In man. Phoenix and uh, Stand Up Live. What's that place next to it? Copper Blues? Yeah, Copper Blues. So, like, how did you two meet? Did you guys meet in Phoenix? Yeah, or? actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, well, go on. Well, I'm going to let you tell a story since you always, you, you know it better than I do. Andy Steinberg, ladies and gentlemen. I, he came in a couple times. It'll be, inter- no, sorry, it'll be interesting that you tell it, too, because based on, that leads us right into my personality, which is why I want to jump into his personality. Okay. But go ahead. What you uh, think is my personality. Hey. So, I, I was just, uh, I, I was featuring for him once, and I said, I sure would like, uh, you know, Love to do some shows with you out on the road because that's what you do when you don't have a real gig, and well, yeah, uh, when you don't live in New York or LA. Yeah, yeah, and I'm and I'm bugging him, and he said sure, and then he never got back to me that year. Then the next year, <laughs> I said the same thing again, and this time he gave me a whole bunch of dates, and I took them, and. Uh, at our first date, he didn't talk to me. Like, the, you know, I don't know how much he, he, he just, Aries, I kind of warmed him up a little bit. He was talking a little bit. And then he just, and on the, our first time, we were in, uh, what was that? Where, where were we in? Levity, I think. Levity. Levity, yeah. Oxnard. But, Oxnard. And that's a weird kind of, you know, it's kind of an odd area. Is, yeah. So you're out there, and I don't really know anyone. He doesn't it's know anyone. It's city if it was at an outlet mall. It, that's exactly right, it. Right, right, right. But he isn't saying anything to me. And we had, like, I thought we already <laughs> broke past this. In Phoenix. This is the second gig? Yeah, it's, yeah. I thought we broke past this in Phoenix. So he goes, 
So at the end, uh, I think it was the second day, I go, hey, man, is that what you expect from your feature, just to sit here, not say anything, wait for you to say something? And he goes, uh, I'm an adult, man. If you want to talk to me, fucking talk to me. And, uh, I like it. Yeah. And so yeah. then we started talking a little bit after that. And then I went and I said, hey, I went and I found a bot- He always drinks tequila. So I, I really appreciated that he took me out. I didn't think I was going to go out again after the, the conversations that we had. And I gave him a bottle of tequila. And I said, hey, man, I really appreciate it. I'm never going to get you another one of these again. It was a, this was a one-time thank you. I wasn't trying to say, you get a bottle of tequila every time you take me on the road. It'd be and smart, uh, though. Yeah. And... Uh, Ever since then, we've been kind of uh... yeah. Because you know, I'm out. One of the one of the reasons why I'm glad I'm doing these podcasts, uh, especially when I do comedians' podcasts, is because I'm trying to dispel this this myth that people think I'm an asshole. I never and I'm a diva. Ever. Well, 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 okay, but here's and I know you enough. I don't know you that well, but I know right. you enough that I would step up and go. What the fuck are you talking well, about? Well, listen, the people that that have have gotten to know me or that take the time to converse with me. Listen, Jay, we're from New York, man. So right. we come with a certain bravado. And people often take that as dickhead. So, and I was saying that to say, you know, um, I don't know you that well either like that. Right. But what I, what I know of you, and I've listened to you on other people's podcasts, and I sense, you someone said something on Opie and Anthony with Patrice where you were talking about how New Yorkers, whether you come, you came up as a comic in Boston or New York, you bust each other's chops. Yeah, yeah. That's what we did. Now, I never came up into that world because the way I started at such a young age and in Jersey and doing a little, mainly the Chitlin yeah, circuits, yeah, my path was just a little bit different. But I'm saying all that to say, you know, there were times when I would hear you say things and I go, I could kind of maybe see how people might perceive Jay as that guy. Yeah, that was me at 11, like, at 11, volume 11. Like, Opie and Anthony, it's, it, it, everything's like, turn up a little bit. Well, and here's what I got to do. Charlie Rose, you come in at like two. Right. It's like, well, you know, it was a crazy time then, Charlie. Yeah. But, but here's what I really want to get to, and this is why I, I, it's like a huge weight I'm about to take off my chest. I, mean, I, I remember I was listening to Opie and Anthony one particular episode, again, with Patrice. And um, again, when we were younger, Listen, let's be real. We all had ego. We all thought our shit didn't stink. We all were, I'm the fucking man. We like NBA players. That's why we're successful. Yeah. yeah. We're successful. I remember uh, Patrice was talking about guys that do impressions. And he, at one point, mentioned to you, he goes, what about this kid, Aerie Spears, Jay? And this was your reaction. Oh, that guy. I mean, what does he do, Shaq? Anybody could do Shaq. And I remember, I went, this motherfucker. (laughs) I don't remember that. I swear you did it. No, I don't. I'm not, I, <laughs> and, I, and I just I went. I never even thought of you ever in my life, even right now, as an impressionist. Like when I was doing yeah. research for the show, I was, I'm like, fuck, like the Mad TV stuff. I'm like, oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. right. Well, he had you on Mad TV, remember? Mm-hmm. The Seven Buddy Cops. And I played. Chris Penn. Yeah, when you I did Chris Penn. So. I don't care how mad you are at me. Yeah. So flash forward to it. I went. What was great was when I saw you on the plane and you were super cool, dude. And I was like, I forgot we started trying to play. Yeah, about, man. You know? I was like, you were super cool. And I called yes, Andy yeah. immediately and I went, and I told Andy the story. I go, remember what I told you about what Jay said about me on Opie and Anthony and how it kind of rubbed me wrong? Yo, he was totally fucking cool. And I'm going to attribute some of that to look, man, age and pain. Pain. When you go through age and pain, you mellow the fuck out. Michael Jordan will not be cocky in 15 more years. When that motherfucker is old, old. And ain't nobody screaming MJ. This nigga going to be humble as a motherfucker. In his prime, he wasn't signing shit. Get this motherfucker 10 more years. Mike's going to beg you to give you his autograph. I'm, he'll come back with that Hitler mustache again. Oh, you, oh, that was funny, too, when you mentioned that. That was hilarious. That, oh. On Opie and Anthony, you talked about that. Man, I've been trucking. I keep redressing these jokes so people think they're new. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, mm, hey, I love all your new stuff. Mm, thanks. <clears throat> mm. Yeah, I, I'm starting to remember the Patrice. Uh, I never really knew you as an impressionist because I always knew you as a comic first. Like you're you're a billboard. Like you're you are now entering town and yeah. you just left town. Like that. Right. Ari Spears, you're a force. And I never really, even like this morning when I was just checking on my notes, and, you know, my extensive notes. <laughs> when I was checking on my notes and stuff, I don't really think of you as an impressionist because to me you're a comic. And I remember like we got along great on Jerry Maguire and. So it's weird. I remember that conversation with uh, Patrice. He was asking me about, uh, he only asked me about black guys. And uh, the guy on Saturday Night Live, I think it was Jay Farrell, does uh, yeah. Denzel. And I was just, yeah. that was, 
I'm pretty sure my stock edge like, please, please, please. Right, like, right, he could have said, like, right. who's better at stealing bases? You were Ricky Henderson. Like, Ricky who? Come on. <laughs> right. Who? Who? But, yeah, but you did Shaq well. And you do impressions. How many of your impressions on your IMDb page oh, oh, the hilarious. do you not I know even he's going. do? Because, like, they go, do Anthony Kiedis. I'm like, no, I just wore silver pants. And I just Listen, panned across, when, we, when, like, when I was the world part six. When I was on Mad TV. Uh, I'm not at, ducking what you just said. No, no, no. I hear No, no. When I was on Mad TV at one point. Um, Duck anyone. Shit, I don't give a fuck. Some, <laughs> several <laughs> of the black cast members had left, and it came down to me and Deborah. So they would just ask me to do black people simply because I was black, not because I could do the voice. Like It says on my page, I do Queen Latifah. I, I put on a bra and heels and, and, the wig, right and, and the wig and fucking now I'm Queen Latifah. It's, I did Missy Elliott. Like, it just it, it was no voice. It was just, hey, nigga, I, put I, this dress on. I see you as Missy Elliott over uh, Queen Latifah. Maybe in the fat version. <laughs> that's, why, that's why he got you the tequila. That you were Missy Elliott. It, exactly. Um, she was on the Tims, The Tims and Missy Elliott. Yeah, right. they go together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Cisco. <laughs> So there it is, man. How the fuck are you, Cisco? I, again, I, I, you know what? We did a, a parody on the thong song called The Wrong Song, and it was a bunch of 300-pound fat bitches in bikinis. So I, we just redid the video going wrong or wrong instead of thong. And, you know, that was I put the wig on, and there we go. Yeah, I, I would do the same thing. People were like, do a – they always named the impressions. Right. And I was literally just standing there. I was like – and look behind me. All the acts are here, including Red Hot Chili Peppers. I'm like, no, I don't know those. I will walk five, whatever those miles guys are. My comment and a question to you. Number one, you know, look, you could go Bill. A lot of people do Bill Cosby. A lot of people do, you know, fuck another black, some other black comic or celebrity. But the ones that floor me are the ones that it's like, who the fuck does that? And dude, I heard you do Harvey Keitel. What the fuck was Ari Spears thinking? Ah. Bringing a goddamn Jew in my house. Dude. Bang, bang, bang. It's a goddamn shooting gallery, the Jew and the jerk. Daddy be back soon. Get he a has, Budweiser high boy. He has the mouth. He has it, the mouth. You know what it is? It's Colin Quinn. Is it real? Oh, and that's another one. Of course it is. You know, bang, bang. Hey. <laughs> Jackson, don't make a big deal out of it. Have some more sugar. Get diabetic. Even the Aries Beers, only guy wears a three-piece suit and shower shoes. All right. <laughs> Goodness, that's crazy. That's my favorite impression to do. Dude. But like, I, get, I gave myself wrinkles doing that, that fucking face. Right. Because it's like when people go do Shaq, it's like, yeah, I can do Shaq in my sleep. But who I love to do is Paul Mooney. Because it's like, who oh. the fuck does Paul Mooney? That's the best. Well, I, I got to hear Paul Mooney. Well, I was hoping you would throw me the lob, nigga. Um, Look, Paul. Paul's here, yeah. You have to get off stage. You've been on stage for 14 hours. <laughs> Wait, for, first of all, all of you can't tell a nigga what he should do. Oh. You have had us in chains for 400 years, nigga. Th- that's just, just, just like a cracker. Tell a nigga to get off stage, but you've been <laughs> on us for 400 years. Let me tell the listener something right now. That is, if you put that voice through an FBI profile machine... <laughs> <laughs> the machine when I tell you that was not Paul Mooney. FBI profile. You see how these white crackers do? Everybody's a suspect to these motherfuckers. You know what's so funny? I can, I close my eyes and I can only picture him last time I saw the Caroline's wearing a sailor suit. <laughs> He was like super fay. Like he was up there like two right. hours, and the more he drank, the more he was like, "Fuck it." Well, here's what I love about he super- here's what I love about Paul's honesty. Uh, Jay, Jamie Masada, the owner of the Laugh Factory, body, 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 faggot body. He did a show. I forget what side network it was called. <laughs> called uh, uh, what was it called? Comedians and something about comedians in court, co- comic court. And we all, they, they took, they, they so called, it, it, right, they took real cases and we shot it at the Long Beach Laugh Factory and they would have comedians play the lawyers. So right around that time I did the, the viral clip where I did all the rappers and it was at like 17 million. Every time I would go to the Laugh Factory, Jamie would go, buddy, buddy, do the rap, do the rap. Not understanding, and this is what sucks about club owners. Just because you own a team don't mean you know how to play the game. <laughs> and it's like, motherfucker, you don't break out fine China unless it's a special occasion. So it's like you keep wanting me to fucking hack it up and just do the rap impression when, it, when it's not necessary. You're talking like, he's talking like ball of Poundstone, like, come on, do the rap. Baby. Yeah. And, and so, you know, on this particular <laughs> episode of Comedy Court, me and Paul were the lawyers. So uh, prior oh. to Paul getting there, Jamie's just going, buddy, for the, for the thing, when you do your, your lawyer, then do the rap. 
And I go, Jamie, there's music involved. It's a process. So finally, Paul comes in, and he pulls Paul to the side and goes, <laughs> buddy, listen, Paul, great idea. Aries is going to do rap, and you beatbox. And Paul went, nigga, I'm not fucking rapping. <laughs> the fuck do I look like beatboxing while this nigga raps? You white motherfuckers killed me. And I think, and secretly, I was going, thank you, Paul. Because I didn't want to tell Jamie no, but it was killing me. Why not? Because it just... Jamie's, you want to blow your big shot at the nah, line? It's, it's just Jamie side is, network Jamie, show. No, Jamie is like a fucking uh, foreigner that comes to America with no, he, business. Liter- literally. Literally. <laughs> and he whores his daughters out for the sake of the business. Fi- figuratively. Yes. <laughs> Jesus, <goodness. Whoa. laughs> we have customer. Put on dress and shoes. And it's Coast like... Wrong, Mickey. Pick up. It's like, we don't, bitch, you don't have to be a whore to sell the product. The product sells itself. It's comedy. Like, give me a fucking break, man. I just did a spot at the Laugh Factory Friday night, and it's just as amazing as it's ever been. Yeah. It, you can't judge how... You ever played the Laugh Factory? I, no, I haven't. You, you will, and you, you'll love it. But it's like you can't judge how funny your shit is by that room. It's, you can't. It's, it's because bubble it's, it, yeah, it's insane. It's, it's like a Comedy Central special where they... Pump the audience to give you applause breaks. That's exactly what's that's, like. that's the most untruthful it's, shit ever. But they're having a great time. Like the truth, yeah. the truth is the joy. And what's weird for me is like you look down, there's like twenty two year old Persian girls with big boobs and they're like, ah, laughing at right. can't tell or weird shit or Paul Mooney impressions, and you're like, I remember Friday, I'm like, how the fuck are they getting this? Well, the opposite of that is the comedy store uh, original room. Yeah. On a late night when there's eight motherfuckers you can't see in the shadows. That ceiling comes down a little lower. Yeah, little lower. man. That's where you that's where you that's that's the dirt the dirty dingy cronk gym in Detroit. <laughs> Back in the Thomas Hearns when niggas was greasy days. Newark Dirt McGurk. Oh, come on, baby. Buddy man. McGurk. That's where you put in your work. Livingstone Bramble. Yeah, yeah. Fucking Laugh Factory on a Friday, Saturday is almost like uh, Rocky Three. I was when he just didn't take it serious. Ivan Drago. Yeah, and he was training with the lights in the camp. Rocky, can I get a pick? So that's, Living you know. In America. It, it, yeah, man. That's glitz and glamour, man. Andy Steinberg, uh, co host. Of Spears and Steinberg, the Jew and the jerk. When you first met Aries, you obviously didn't think he was a jerk because you asked him to go out on the road, and um, he said, yeah. Um, I, I met him when I was like 48, 49. How old are you now? 53. I didn't start doing comedy until I was uh, 42. That fascinates me. So like, well, I already know you don't think he's a jerk because you guys were doing a podcast yeah. together. But like, He the- might now. No, no, but, but see, I was older. And what, what I mean by that is that he, he didn't, I, I understood that he, what he was doing. Like he was, gets ready for a show. He gets ready for the show. You don't bug I, someone when they're getting ready. I, I'm going to say this because I think you and I are alarmingly alike. Dude, I'm trying to tell you. No, it's I told. feel it. I don't think he's getting ready for a show. I think there's nothing in there. Buddhist monks. Because <laughs> med- <laughs> uh, like I fall asleep. I could literally... As the guy goes back, the host goes back up to bring me up, I could just go down in the booth and go right to fucking sleep right before I go on stage. Because it's fight or flight or freeze. And I'm reading a lot of like evolutionary psychology and taking online courses and shit because for coaching it helps me. And it's like there's less than 1% of the population who get really sleepy. Like when a fight breaks out in a club, you're like, hey, you fight these dudes? Hey. Mm. <laughs> that's me. But I don't think you're like getting ready for the show. Like, oh, I got to do this, then I got to do this. Because you kind of free flow like jazz. Right. It's just, there's no small, t- I have nothing in me. I, you know what? I, I, okay, let me, here's the truth. There, you got it all wrong, Andy. <laughs> there's a percentage of me that, yes, I'm trying to focus on the show. But you hit a, the nail on the head, Andy. <laughs> but a, a bigger percentage, I don't like people coming up to me. Like, leave me the fuck alone. Like, let me walk in the building before you hit me for, can I get a picture? I ain't even in the motherfucking door yeah, yet. Yeah, but he's he not, has, that's he has, not what he is. Yeah, but he has his head. He has his headphones. Like on. I have my headphones well, then you're an on. Idiot. Yeah, you see, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> but you know what? You know what would be better for him? And people would stop thinking he was such an asshole if he would just if he get over the ear headphones instead of. Or the, maybe he get sunglasses and a German Shepherd. Like what? Well, <laughs> that, that, that would help too. Alone. That would help too. But yeah, but you should leave people alone. But what, I, what I'm saying is, I was in, I know what it's like to go through things. You you don't you don't bug people at certain times. I'm older. I just I saw who he was. And I respected it. That was all. That, that's it. Wasn't well, uh, this all started because you told a story? Be like, hey man, if you don't want me to come on the road with you, 
But, but, that's, but like that's, a, that's the Jewish thing in me, too, though, dude. I, I, Aries, every weekend, he kicks my ass about me just being that. You know how you said you guys are successful because you guys knew you were the shit? Yeah, not so much right here. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very Jewish trait. I, I, I can't get over it. And he busts my ass about it constantly, and I can't in, get past it. In what way? As a mentor? Yeah. It's I, all, it's I, all I just, mental. I just see certain times where I just go, nigga, stop being so nice. Like, I, I tried that. The world rapes you, nigga. After a while, I'm, I'm, mm. I, I don't know. Just, just stop being so nice. You're always overly nice. And it's cool to be a nice dude. Sometimes be a little, be a dick sometimes. Or stand up for yourself. Yeah. Walk over a motherfucker if you got to. I'm giving you a lot of exits here. Dude, <laughs> listen, man. Listen, life fucks you. I'm fucking it back. I, I'm, I'm like a kid that's been diddled by his uncle. You know, I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little fucked up. I'm, I'm, I've been hurt. Bro. Yeah. Okay. How old are you? You're about I'm four 44. Years than, yeah. Four years younger than me. So I'm 48. I, uh, my mom died this year and it was, that made the most sense of anything that had happened in my life. The most sense? Absolutely. Because I've been hurt. Oh, And wow. effed up. Like, second divorce. Oh, you sodomy. Know, you don't know nothing about that. Oh, uh, I do, brother. My Dude. asshole's bleeding. I'm going yeah, through it right one. now. The second one. Se- second one with the same chick. <laughs> That's the blackest shit I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> what, is she fucking like Asian, too? Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> That is the best. That is the fucking best. Yeah, nigga. There's no one that's enjoyed your second divorce more than I've you never right seen now. that reaction. <laughs> no, it wasn't a second divorce. It was the same chick. Chick, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so black. And she fucked me hard the first time. Well, it's a fuck the why should she not do it again? Exactly. That's the definition of insanity. Exactly. Not really. They say if you keep doing it over and over. Well, like I did twice. it. Well, yeah, but two times isn't like I mean, insane. come on, man. Rape more than twice, nigga. That's enough. I filed twice with my second wife. I filed in, um, what was it, July 4th is when I left the house. Actually, I went to leave July 3rd. And I was stuck in a stairwell in my house, like having to explain why I was leaving until July but, 4th. But you left on your own. Yeah. Yeah. No, this last time I was served with a restraining order, kicked out of my own house. Oh, that old guy. And had to go stay with my brother. And then if you read what was Good in the restraining order. Good look on a brother. No, dude. When you, if you read what mm. was in the restraining order, it's just like, this is criminal. This yeah. is mafia shit. Like, th- with this, this, this is straight up, I'm strong arming you, nigga. And it, yeah, it, it's kind of like. David Tell did a bit once. Ladies, don't you hate when you're fucking a guy in a band that doesn't make it? Mm. <laughs> but it's like, we're not the band that didn't make it, but we ain't Zeppelin. Right. It's not like we're fucking U2 over for that whole catalog, getting, wow. that, getting that Lionel Richie catalog. Mm. It's like, we, we, made, we made great livings, plural. If you got two divorces, you got to make three of them. Right. <laughs> but it's like, you know, you have a much better life if you just like fucking were cool and hung in there. And to her, I mean. Right, Yes. Like yes. you, you like like yeah, you're strong harming a nigga, but it's like all of a sudden it's like what are you gonna get out of this? Like your buyout's gonna be like what one one? Right, right, like right. Like all like here's everything. I am not paying alimony, here's your one one. Enjoy the next forty years of your Puerto Rican life. It's fucking unbelievable, man. They go down to Puerto Rico all year at Don Gavin. They're down there all year. I don't know how they can afford it. <laughs> Dude, let me tell you something. You know Don man. Gavin, Andy? No. He's a Boston comic. He goes, I just got back from Puerto Rico. Too many Puerto Ricans. Huh. And they're, uh, they're down there all year. I don't know how they can afford it. You know? <laughs> it's like his opening joke. I'm just like, what? <laughs> right, right. Screen, I, thought that was I love it. I that love motherfucker it. would have just reset life. Wow. So when you go to get... Re- Are you married, Andy? I'm divorced. How many times? I did just did it once. I was, I was so, I was so like it, it, it made sense word. to me. It made sense to me. Like you do this, you get it. You, you go, you get the t-shirt. You just fucking done. <laughs> Your picture on the log flume. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all act like we're sleeping the second time. Mm. So, how long you been divorced? I'm gonna circle back to you, brother. Yeah. No, that's that's the oh, walk. Yeah. That's the Reggie Jackson oh, game dude. seven pitch right here. Probably about. Uh, well, we when I, I left. And I think we stayed married for like four or five, that's, four years. After you left. But that's so not your personality to walk out on a marriage. It's more like it, to stay it, inside. No, no, no. It was, it was fucked up. And I just said, okay. And, and uh, she made more. She was making a lot of money. And uh, I wasn't going to go file for the divorce. I figured let her pay for it. And I left. I left everything in the house. My kids had everything. Uh, see, I didn't how, t- see how they do? Yeah. yeah. Is that the Mexicans? Yeah. Yeah, man. They're mad at the Jews. Oh. Well, that's that's the oh, other that's part of this. Puerto Rican I'm actually, landscapers. Oh. I'm actually a Mexican Jew. 
Okay. My mom's Mexican. My dad was Jim. Hey, what does that mean? Uh, one side of the family does this, and the other side of the family does that? No. <laughs> you know, every fucking guy's got those stupid jokes. Right, right, crowd right. work. No, I didn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, with the fucking leave. Who's his asshole? Do you have to tell him to stop? I just want to act like a big shot. Is that like a leaf blower? There we go, man. So you just stop. I, I can't believe. I'm sorry, Andy. I'm, I just, I still, I can't believe you. Harry's married the same lady twice. I've heard of it before. It's very like uh, Liz Taylor and Richard Burton. Right. But you ain't Richard Burton, partner. Listen, listen man. She's she's a firecracker, baby. And I, I and I like a spicy bitch. Uh, and it was and it was cute for the first. Four or five years. Yeah, that's where I'm at with her now. But but now it's like okay, it ain't cute no more. <laughs> um, and you know she came she came along at a time where I really needed that in my life. What combat? Nah, because my first baby mama who was well <laughs> I, that too. I, I didn't even mean for that. To be <laughs> but but my first my first baby mama who I've been on and off with for twenty years, and we probably gonna get back together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you ever get a new? She's car? the one. She's the one. Um, the one what? The, the, who I'm gonna retire with? This, this. I'm too old to start over, man. I can't even stomach the idea of. Bro, my next wife is in fifth grade right now. <laughs> That's hilarious. If I talk to her now, I'm a creep. I understand that. I, I, I just, I don't have the patience. I don't give a fuck about your birthday and what your favorite color is, and I don't want to pretend. What, see, Andy, that's what you know. That. I'm, I'm, I'm an old veteran. I'm icing my knees now, nigga. I'm about to hang my jersey <laughs> in the rafters. I don't have time for that shit, man. Dating is a young person's game. I always so, so my you date yourself out of the game. I'm done, nigga. You know, I don't have the way, patience. Way sub in. Come on, man. <laughs> this uh, is the old yeah, I'm, I'm fuck that. I'm so I'm like you know this is the, this is the broad who I know. I'm a fuck with, but it, I was going back and forth between the two of them. Hey, I got an expression I use. You chase two rabbits, you lose two rabbits. Well, I'm you a can't, g- you can't pick up two. If I put two rabbits down on this floor, I said, "Go on, pick them up." Well, the, here's the other thing: one of the rabbits is as old as me, so this ain't no hunt. <laughs> Nigga, this, this is easy. That's the baby mom. That's the baby mom. So you know, she's black. Yeah, she's black. I know. I knew it. I you, just, come I on, baby, you feel it. Um, Feel for comfort. Yeah, nigga, I know you know. So, long story oh, short, know. man, um, <laughs> this one was just a headache, but she came along at a time when my first baby mama wasn't on a job. Like, bitch, you don't work. I pay your bills. I bought you a car. You can't get up and make tacos for a nigga at two in the morning? You complaining about making tacos? Meanwhile, this Puerto Rican bitch at Bayonne, New Jersey goes, I got you, Poppy. Oh. I <laughs> How could I not? That caught me, nigga. Stupid though. I'm not even thinking about sex. I'm still bugging out at 2 a.m. tacos. Come on, man. I'm, I, I'm, that's like, I'm, I it, deserve to have tacos if, made, nigga. I'm it, the breadwinner. If it's Tuesday, it's even better. 2 a.m. Taco Tuesday. 2 a.m. Ta- taco that's, Tuesday. You got to get them late Monday night. Come on, man. That's a bad spot in the city. You come back like 2 a.m. on a Monday. It's Tuesday morning. And yet, that's the most comedian thinking ever. I'm like, ooh, yeah, tacos. Hey, man. I, listen, as chauvinistic as it may be. It's like if you if she worked, now that's a different argument. But, but bitch, you don't work. But it ain't chauvinistic. I, I I hate this politically correct world. Like, there's nothing chauvinistic about that. Like, I'm, listen, I'm a, if, I'm a, if you were a lady and she was a guy sitting on the couch picking her nose watching Cinemax, you'd be like, you can't like, right. You know, make some soup or something. Right, right. right. So I'm, you know, <clears throat> and I come from that old school <laughs> Neanderthal. If I bring home the bacon, bitch, you fry it. Chicago I'm not bringing home the bacon and, and fry. That's a very good point. So come on, man. So I, she she really wasn't jumping to attention. Well, and she didn't I, have to. She she didn't have to, but she should. Like, bitch, I'm on TV. I, I'm 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 somebody. I'm paying your rent. You don't work for nothing. The listener might go like, oh, I could see how, as you said earlier about me on Open Anthony, how somebody might think Aries could be. Seen oh, this is it. This is it. Maybe, but I know exactly what you're saying. Like, okay. I'm on fucking TV, right? Like, I'm working. It's such a bizarre thing. It's such a weird job. It's the upper one percent. Even if you're like low level on TV, like that. Uh, can you still hear me, guy? Right. Like we know that. If you saw that guy, you would just go, "Can you hear me now?" Can you let me, me now? let me quickly quote Chris Rock. Yeah. He had one of the best quotes I ever heard. The, the worst job in comedy, I mean, in, in show business, is better than the best job out of it. Absolutely. So it's like again, if if and listen, I'm I'm not Kevin Hart. I'm not. Whoever the next big white boy is, 
but I'm somebody, bitch. <laughs> we can get on a plane and travel all over the country and some parts of the world, and motherfuckers know my first and last name, and you That's can't what, make tacos? I, I, and I, I got this Puerto Rican bitch ready to kiss my ass? You are taco worthy. Come on, B. Why Thank does it, you. Why doesn't Andy, well, Andy brought you the tequila right. at Levity Live, so I, he knew, you know, you gotta, every once in a while, you just got to let the wolf. Stroke the bear. Let the wolf. Grease on the wheel. Yeah. That's wow. Three comics, three analogies. Throw some grease on the wheel, stroke the bear. I go, let the wolf know he's the wolf. Come on, baby. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> wolf, Come it's on. a 22-minute drive, gentlemen. I'll be there in 18. So the Puerto Rican lady that you're going to marry and divorce and marry and divorce. Right. She got paid the first time you got divorced. Who did she? <laughs> so when you come back together, is it like visiting your clothes at Goodwill? Do you get to try them on? <laughs> that would have been something. Um, <laughs> like, oh, I remember all these plates. Listen, as, as, as Neanderthal-like as I can be, I'm a real romantic at heart. Yep. And I wanted to believe, man, we could make this work. I wanted to believe. Because, listen, our chemistry was wonderful when it was wonderful. We were like, you know, fucking Jordan and Pippen, man. I don't have to look at you to know where you're going to be to throw the ball and vice versa. So I had a great fucking time with her. But between, she's Scarface in a skirt, nigga. She can be sweet <laughs> one moment and next minute, fuck you, man. And it's like the, between the jealousy, let me get the codes to your social media. Why is this bitch hugging you? Because I'm famous. It's a picture. <clears throat> just going through that kind of shit it it's just it, it wasn't cute no more man I just went through a breakup and uh, a girlfriend breakup and I realized the no, my Achilles heel I'm really good at spotting people's blind spots but mm. it's a blind spot for a reason I'm really bad at spotting mine right I'm the last guy to like oh this is what fucks you up party when people assume shit mm. it makes me crazy because it's a real passive I don't believe in you not I don't believe you Right. Like, hey, who's this on the thing that you're following? On the, it's like a fucking stranger. Like, really? Right. Look, I want to fuck her in case if, if you die. If you die, I got in case of emergency break glass. So I just heart all of her shit because she's fine. Mm. But you can't really say that in a relationship. And Instagram has to stop introducing people that I'm having sex with with the people I want to have sex with. Mm. It's like, hey, you both like Jay Moore. You should follow each other. I disagree. <laughs> I think it's a bad idea. How come you like all her stuff? Yeah, just in case you die, I get to have sex with her. She's right there. Yeah, I, you know, I, I even got to the point, and I don't know, it probably wasn't as smart, but I was so brazen. I got to the point where I just went flat out like, look, bitch, I give you everything you want. The Christian Louis Vuittons, the Gucci bags. If I have some pussy on the side, so What? Like, so what? I'm not going to leave the bitch for yeah. you. You wifey. Look at Corey. Like, Look so at, what? When I high-fived Aries, my 22-year producer, last comic standing, more sports. What's your problem? This podcast just put her head down like, no, nah, like she lost another great one. Oh, man. There goes George Washington. Somebody finally shot that fucking wooden tooth <laughs> ass all up his horse. <laughs> No, that's how I feel because I, I got the libido of like an old Jewish woman. Like I'm booby. Uh-huh. Like I'm, you, you have a very high libido compared to me. I have it in my brain, right? but my shit don't work. I got hey, a guard man, hose. Listen, I, 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 uh, my libido is good, but my reload shot is like a musket, nigga. Reload? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm straight stick and the powder, nigga. For me, I bust that one nut, nigga. It'd take me two days before we do it again. I would give one nut to get the reload. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> Shit. Andy, we're talking about sex. These yes. are all euphemisms yes, for yes, sex. Yes, sex, yeah. You uh, still have control of the board. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, my girl's 19 years younger than me. Go on. And uh, So she was in fifth grade when you were... No, she was, she was actually 20... Uh, 20 no, I didn't mean when you met her. No, 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 but she was twenty. No, no, no. no I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. I was four. I was forty-two, and she was twenty. Uh, Twenty-three. Now, what do you guys possibly have in common? Dude, she's my, not Jewish. No, she's she's just the coolest chick I've ever met in my whole life. <clears throat> We've been dating for eleven years. Is that a Nashville accent? Kentucky? <laughs> do you have a bit of a Southern accent? No. No. None. Okay. Sounds a little bit like Michael Dunaway or John Moore. No, maybe, maybe I don't know a lot. Let me ask you a question, man. I didn't mean to we, smoke you out with the James Bond card. You, 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 you scared me. I don't know. Hey, uh, man. Don't, text I'm, I'm, listening, I'm, listening to my, I'm listening to my voice now. Maybe like, I'm, I'm worried about a stroke at this age. I'm worried about a stroke at this age. Right. This is what you sound like. I'm worried about a stroke at this age. <laughs> See, I might be having one. No, no. <laughs> wait, I do smell toast. Though. <laughs> um, wait, so how much? Okay. You said something earlier. He's going to finish this up. What? No, Did I, he's I, 
No, I was, yeah. no I, was, I was just going to say, like, Thank like, you. Do that a like lot when, more often. and here, here's what's crazy. You, you could find ball. it because when we got divorced the first time, <laughs> she got a restraining order against me. And <laughs> no, no, no. Twi- I'm telling you, dude, everything has been twice. And it was on TMZ. Aries, Aries uh, attacks wife with a baseball bat. When the truth, it was, it yeah. was the opposite. Yeah. Aries came in her with a butcher knife. She that actually happened. slashed my tire. But because Who the TMZ... Who a butcher knife? But it, you guys live in a Tom Hanks horror movie? Dude, I'm trying to tell you, man. So, butcher knife is from the knife rack. Man, after all of this shit hit, you know, it's like, uh, you know, now the industry, people in the industry are going, oh my God, is he a woman beater? Is he this, is he that? I'm, so, I'm sorry. Like, I've lost jobs behind this bitch. Who has a butcher knife? I can't get back I haven't seen a butcher knife. She, she's Puerto Rican. She, she's Puerto Rican. They keep them by the bedside yeah. table. <laughs> Andy Steinberg. Just, I'm like, all right, Andy. Oh, he got through his legs. Dude. He's on second base. All right, Andy. Don't swing at that. Good job. So here's the thing I noticed. Like the fact that she did the same thing to you twice, and the TMZ thing. Look, I got caught up in that because I retweeted. Um, oh, fucking little boozy. Yeah. Because when he got out of jail. He uh, was talking about he walked in on two guys fucking in the shower. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry, nigga. I, I know it was like, coke. he's like, oh, did you feel the like Coca-Cola time, nigga? All right, nigga, be good, man. And over and over and over. I so want to touch this when you get done with this, what you're saying. And he was trending on Twitter for being a homophobe. He's like, these niggas were faggots, man. Fuck. And I tweeted, Lil Boozy said nigga 27 times, and he's a homophobe? And TMZ picked that shit up. And I, they're like, hey, so what do you want to do about this? It's like the fucking sports department. I'm like, sports? I don't, I'm not an athlete. I did a sports talk radio show a couple of years ago. And I go, I don't know what the story is. And I go, have Harvey Levin call me. 60 seconds. I'm looking at kindergartens for my son. I'm outside of like, it was Palisades Elementary School. It's like, bling, Harvey Levin. My phone's at Harvey Levin, even though it's not in my contacts. Like, that's right. power. Right. <laughs> Your phone just goes, I know this is. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> So I go, what's the story? And he goes, you know, with the Bill Maher and the... And he just mentioned, like, two, like, real satellite, like, sort of, like, Bill Maher ain't a fucking racist. Like, I'm just like, but what's the story? I'm not going to tell you not to do what you do, but, like, what's the story? And he goes, let me transfer you over to the sports department again. Mm. They're just going to do what they do. It's a 24-hour news cycle, and nobody, like, whatever. Who knows knows, and who doesn't right. know. They're, you're never going to convince them otherwise, so who cares? Let me ask you, let me switch gears for a second. Because you just said... Niggas so freely, uh, like it was breathing. Now on our podcast, we talk a lot about race, and Andy has a joke where he says the N word, but he's very uncomfortable. A, a joke. <laughs> you should hear him when you're not around. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, but he's very uncomfortable about saying it outside the stage, and I'm like, yo, our well, podcast. Be, but no, wait, wait, wait a minute. Our podcast is entertainment. This is entertainment, oh, nigga. I meant like at the Waffle House. No, <laughs> I'm like, well, maybe he should be. Right. I kick both doors open. I just shout it out right. But, in the I, but of I'll the be Waffle trying House. to tell him the from, from, doors. from a comedy standpoint. Context. This is entertainment. Is what we're doing. If something is funny and the word belongs, why are you so nigga? Say that shit. Yeah. And, and Jay wielded it like it was nothing. Yeah, but I'm not are. gonna get mad because I know what we're doing here. But I don't have a career yet. Why do you it keep, doesn't, I would like to have something to do. Then why, why, why are you on my podcast? Why the fuck are you here if you don't have a career? <laughs> then get the fuck out. Go upstairs and pet the Pomeranian and get the fuck out of here with your bullshit mindset. You're, That's that get, New York shit. Like, what are you doing? Stop that shit. Come on, baby. Do you see this shit? Yeah, but it would be nice to have some you, momentum in the Wait a minute. You got black dudes. You got It'd black be nice dudes. to have a comb, too. You don't give a shit about that. <laughs> Bernie Sanders Jr. <laughs> Yo, we got black dudes that email our show and go, nigga, say the shit. Now you got a white dude telling it. That's pa- that's permission beyond permission. <laughs> no, no, I, I wouldn't agree with that. But here's the thing. When a black guy, like when Patrice called me nigga, it was the most validating thing ever. Like, this nigga. Like, pointing right. at me like in disbelief. Right. At, at some impre- I think I was doing Forrest Whitaker. Like, okay. Yeah. And he's like, ah! He just called me N-word, N-word, N-word. And for me, like you said, we're... Context, context. I don't even think it's context. I am a reporter. I'm describing to an audience what I've seen and heard with my own eyes. Lil Boozy said, nigga, 27. I counted them. Right. That's what he said. I am reporting what actually happened. If I ever say it on stage, which is every show, by the way, I say it every single show because I got three different stories where a black guy said something to me like, hey, man, hey, okay, 
Hey, what's wrong with your neck, nigga? Like, just weird <laughs> shit. Like, it's <laughs> right. like I'm not going to change reality to make you more comfortable. Thank you. That's what happened. But I do Thank it on, you. But on stage. What's I wrong have no- with your neck? <laughs> like I said, inline CVS. Right. I'm buying fucking crab shampoo. I'm 22 years old. And he didn't even know you. Just guy goes, hey, man, what's wrong with your neck, nigga? <laughs> I'm like, I'm holding crab shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> like, nothing's wrong with my neck. I love it. But that's in the context of being on stage and reporting and doing what your job is. When I'm doing a podcast, if it's not necessary, I don't find it. I don't find it. Of course you, 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 I you, agree. You, I agree with I you. I know, but he doesn't think it's necessary because of his own personal hangup. What's it, the it, joke where you say it, though? It basically oh, about me being an 11-year-old kid and exactly what you're talking about, basically reporting what happened to me at a black church. Yeah, so that's. Can I hear the joke? Can the listeners enjoy it? No, man, it's a long, it's a long joke. Oh, okay. get, get oh, me the fucking cliff notes. Oh, man. The, cliff, the cliff notes of the joke are: uh, I, I, I go to uh, my 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 best friend next door neighbor takes me over to the to the church, and all the kids were kind of fucking with me a little bit because I was the only white dude at the, at the black church. Which which right away makes you the coolest kid there. <laughs> it's like when you quit drinking, you're in the club holding a bottle of water. You're like. Oh, I'm this motherfucker. Yeah. Right, right, right. I'm the white dude of black church. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. Then, come on, T.D. Jakes. <laughs> right. And this is 1976. I have my full Jufro. <laughs> I have a pick in my hair. Well, it's got to be a Jufro, yeah. man. And, uh, and, my, and Eric walks over to me, and he puts his arm around me. He looks at all the kids on the playground. He goes, hey, I don't want anybody fucking with this kid right here. This is Andy Steinberg, my nigga. Hmm. And, it, it just, and then it goes into the, where I'm in church, and the, pre- the preacher asks who I am. And I pick a low play as a motherfucker. And I stand up and I go, I'm I'm Andy Steinberg, Eric's nigga. So it's it's yeah. it, basically that's it. But it's in the story. You're squirming now. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank you. I, I don't I, I I don't know. When you say it, I'm being dead serious. When you say it on stage, do you get that uncomfortable when you do it? In, no, not on, not he, on stage no, he, at all. No, no, he doesn't. But what happens sometimes is, you know, depending on where we're at. If we're in Memphis, where niggas are slow and real niggas, <laughs> then they. But if we're in D.C., when niggas Talk read, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> if that racetrack wasn't broken, I would have get up and fucking broken it again. When he does it, and they go, wow! <laughs> so, so I'm like, you know, don't get caught up in, don't overthink it. You know, in certain parts of the country, motherfuckers is different. Yeah, we all niggas, but it's different. <laughs> niggas in the South say shit like, and I, I, it used to, I, that's why I hate the South. <laughs> I'm selling my CDs after the show, and this bitch goes to her friend, Girl, how much that CD was? <laughs> where, where they is? Now, niggas up north talk crazy, too, but not like slaves. <laughs> Them niggas talk like slaves, man, and I can't stand it. I'm sorry, miss. I don't speak the color purple. Could you? My mother, my mother was a world-renowned jazz singer and still is. We didn't same, get to any of the, my notes. You gotta come same with, with fucking Lionel Hampton, the legendary jazz artist. So I came from a family of, you know, well-to-do. Yeah. We wasn't good times. We was the Huxtables. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, But you were the cool-ass I come from that stock. Jazz singer, man. Yeah, man, I ain't no uppity nigga, but I'm, I'm still a nigga. No, it's jazz. Yeah. No, it's, you can't be. Yeah, man. Unless you're a Marsalis. Well, uh, <laughs> I had to pick a name out of a hat. I got, got you. I got you. Um, stand, so, yeah. stand down, Brim. Man, so stop overthinking it. You overthink this shit, man. Stand by your joke, motherfucker. I do on stage. I know, but you get that, like he said, you get that squirmy shit sometimes. You know what shit he pulls on? Okay, here's what we did. When we were in Memphis, we're at a club called Chuckles. Uh, Have you ever heard of this club? I know Chuckle the Fuck Up. Chuckle the Fuck Up, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, But it's all black. I'm the only white dude in the whole, like, area. Not just the club, in the area. And tell him the joke you were opening with. Okay. R. Kelly shit. Okay. So I would go out. Are you hacky. How you coons doing? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Close. <laughs> Close. He goes, he goes, uh, so I was, I was, I, I go, you guys, you guys looked at me like I was, uh, like, you guys looked at me like you just found out that R. Kelly was going to be your gym teacher. That's all I said. That was what I said. He had me come out on Sunday and we, we talked about it and I said, I'll do it on Sunday. And I came out. He was, and this was the joke. Hey, you guys, how you started, hey, you, you, guys, you, you, you guys are staring at me, me like, like I just walked into the slave quarters. Yeah. <laughs> Which is ten times better than Art. Yeah, it Kelly. was, but it, it, and I walked up and then and, and then I did. I had the tag, which was there was a white girl with a black dude, and I walked up to her and I and I, and I fist bumped her. And I go, you know what I'm saying? And uh, good. It, it, it went. Like it. it was it went crazy, but it also could have went completely the other no, way. No, no, no. Mindset. There is no but. It went crazy. You said. Yeah. That's what happened. That's your data. It also could have no. 
Because it happened one way only. Thank you. It, you're batting 1,000. One at you. bat, one home run cleared the fucking fence. I'm trying to tell this nigga this shit all this is time, all, motherfucker. Hey, you need life coaching? Coach Come JJ37 on, at gmail.com. Come on, baby. It's all mental, brother. Let me see you war face, nigga. Come on. You don't scare me. Work on it. Come on, Fire. man. Stay in your ground, man. I'm Floridian with my comedy, nigga. I'm staying. I don't budge, nigga. <laughs> Let me hear your war cry. Come on, baby. So, yeah, it, you, that was interesting. You int- that's, you're like the girls I date that make me insane. You're introducing a negative where it doesn't exist. Yeah, but it also could have meant this. But it didn't. Mm. So now we're untangling a necklace instead of putting it on. Wow. Well, well I love that shit. No, I mean, bro. <laughs> uh, I yes. got my glasses on. Are you smiling? Like, I shit. asked him. I, asked him, I, I, say said, she, I say she fixed. But, but, but check, check this out. I asked him uh, we, right around Oscar time a, a year or so ago. A year the grou- ago, the grouch. Um, I said, I said. Um, so if you got a role in a movie where you had to say "nigga," would you say it? And he's saying "yeah," but I could tell he don't mean it. So I said, let's put you to the test. The scene from uh, the Django when Leonardo DiCaprio takes all the blood and rubs Kerry Washington's face and go, "This nigga winch here." I said, deliver me that line to me. Make me believe it. And action. And we did fifteen takes. Before I found one I liked. <laughs> Were you guys like in a car or something? No, in a hotel room. Yeah. And he just kept going. This you, you share the room like Kerry Rhodes and his assistant, like he almost, <laughs> almost. <laughs> oh, we can't guarantee the rooms are connecting. All right. Yeah. It was. A, it was. A, he, he he went for the director's cut version. It was fifteen yeah. attempts. But yeah, he didn't want any fucking voiceover. He just wanted to get the shit. Yeah, he man. And I and, and, I, and that's what I'm saying. Whether it's stage, podcast, movie, it's all entertainment. So let your mind go, nigga, and commit. Stick the landing. If you see it the wrong way, land. Okay, you know what? I'm going to get rid of that analogy. Strike that analogy. I tell the wrestlers, I coach high school wrestling. I tell them, trust your rifle. Okay? Trust your rifle. A sniper, right before he takes the shot, doesn't go, I hope the trigger doesn't jam. The guy's getting smaller and smaller in the scope. He goes, I hope I calculated the wind the right way. Smaller, smaller, smaller. Is this gun clean? Gone. Missed it. They just pull the fucking trigger. They trust that rifle. Overthinking. They trust the rifle because they clean the rifle. They can take it apart and put it back together all day in the dark. You're the rifle. Trust the rifle. Just pull the fucking trigger. It's death by thought. Don't die because you're thinking. You fucking Jesus Christ. Give that, to Gary, cha- give that to Gary Goldman with his hundred and whatever. Look, uh, don't change the subject, out. you chess champion. <laughs> <laughs> Pawn to Rook 4. Pawn to Rook 4. Do it. Hit the timer. He looks like one of those old Jewish guys in Washington Square Park. One of the greatest stories I ever heard, <laughs> I one of the most Goldman. entertaining stories I ever heard was when you told that story about Tracy Morgan <laughs> and leaving the club with the shirt off That's, and just walking into the sunset. Here's the one you need to know is when I went to the improv once, he was fist fighting the audience in the hallway. Fist fighting? I was in my house in the, in the hills and I'm like, oh, my friend goes, hey, Tracy's at the improv. I think it was John DiMaggio. He goes, Tracy's at the improv like right now. I'm like, oh, I was like drunk as fuck playing Sonic the Hedgehog. Right. Like, wait, that's how drunk I was as an adult. Uh, I thought that was a good idea. I'm going to do that when I leave here. <clears throat> I had Clipper season tickets. I made a lot of bad choices when I was drunk. Right. <clears throat> and uh, I go, but if you're an alcoholic, this is what I say on stage. I go, but if you're an alcoholic, your next thought is, well, then how the fuck am I going to get there? So I just drove as fast as I could so the accidents were behind me. Not my problem. Mm. So I get there. I walk in and literally Tracy's in that hallway at the improv. It's 66 to 1 and it's fucking even. <laughs> my man can speak with those hands. But he's like, bah, bah, bah. He's like, and he's talking shit the whole time. I'm like, I miss my daughter. Body shots. He's like, <laughs> like when what he, the like, fuck does that have to do with anything? It's amazing. That's those, hilarious. Those body shots where you go like, that came from his fucking toe. Like, bang. Right. He's like dropping guys doing body shots. He's like, I miss my daughter. Bah, bah. Right. Bah, bah. And then he didn't fucking have a daughter. He had like three sons, and one's like older than he is. Like I don't even know how that works. <laughs> but he's just talking shit all the time. Going, I miss my daughter. He's doing oh leg kicks like God. UFC leg. Like Tracy can fucking box. Right. There's a couple comics like Martin Lawrence can fucking straight talk with those hands. Like Martin mm. can box. Tracy can just box. Mitch Mullaney, remember him? Right. That dude fucked up Harbor Heights Mexican Mafia members at the Laugh Factory. Like he got out of his car. Like all oh, right. Little nerdy ass right, Nick right, Frino, right, right, teacher. Right. You don't know this? Oh, diff- yeah. He was hitting dudes because he thought it was like, it was a lull in the action. So he was like, dick, dick. <laughs> so I, I run to help Tracy because I'm drunk and that's our karaoke. Like, fuck it, a fight program. He just sees a white guy running at him. So he just turns like, Rrr! and I 
I did like that matrix bending over backwards and his right. fist goes over my face. We come up at the same time and I swear this is exactly what he said to me. I'm not gonna fuck with you, Jay Morris. You legendary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You choked out the big man on the 17th floor. Jay Moore's my biological father. He's saying to the people he was just oh, fighting. Oh, that's hilarious. And then he looks back at me and he goes, let's go get pregnant. Meaning like, let's right. fight together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was his way of saying, I almost hit you. I love that. I love let's the go I, get pregnant. I miss my daughter. I miss my daughter, God damn it. Oh, that's This hilarious. is a main call. I regulate all shades. Cripple pussy, stay moist. <laughs> my favorite book is Scruples. I had the flu once and... Cr- Hawaii, Hawaii, like I had a crazy ass flu. I was right. in a bathtub with like 103 fever in a cold tub. And I sat there for two hours just going through every conceivable nomenclature and word in the English language. Like, my favorite book is Scruples. I'm like, all right. Right. Rob Zoni, goddammit. <laughs> like, just going, what about my drapes? Uh. Like, I just went through everything possibly tracing. So, Andy, mental mindset. I'm going to help you, brother. Because sometimes you just need to hear it on a different frequency. Because I know he's been saying the shit all the time. See how he's shaking his head now? Yeah. Because I, 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 this him. is joy for me because I'm thinking, okay, maybe he's just hearing it from me so it ain't doing nothing. But you're saying it now. And he's, you know, you're a respected comic, nigga. So, and a white guy's telling you about the N-word. So I'm like, come on, man. How I'm telling you about, validation I, do you need? I'm telling you about reporting. Tell me about I'm not yeah. telling you specifically about the N-word. Like, that happened to you at that church? That's what happened to you at that church. You can't change reality to make the audience comfortable. They got to lean into the fucking fire. Now, I even had to say that to somebody after a show once. A dude got mad and came out. Yeah, because you fucking talk to people before they go on stage. No, this was, after, <laughs> this was afterwards. I was setting up merch. His merch. I almost yeah. got my ass kicked yeah. instead of his merch. There's your fucking Taco Tuesday. <laughs> listen, man. Right <laughs> listen, it happens. a nice Jewish man. There we go. And, but it happens, man. That's <laughs> par for the course, man. If you, if, you, if, you, if you don't ever get somebody wanting to fuck you up, you ain't doing comedy right. I've had, I've had three motherfuckers want to fight me and a bitch in Connecticut at the Funny Bone throw a ketchup bottle at my face. <laughs> she so, worked there. Yeah, she, man. She, she couldn't marry him anymore. Come no, on, and recently that same Funny Bone. Yeah, the dude wanted to stab and me. And also like, you're rolling mob deep here. Like, you, you like, it, nobody's going to fucking beat up Harry Spears. Like, hey, try. Harry's, good. <laughs> the, yeah. I can't wait to get jumped again. <laughs> oh, you've been through it. Yeah. Oh, great. What was the joke that did it? Oh, no, I got jumped at an ATM after a Lakers game. Oh. I was like, oh, okay. But it had nothing to do with stand-up? No. Oh, that's like, have you I ever had, my, that's have like, you ever I miss my daughter. I miss my daughter. Laugh Factory, you and Kenny. That's the story. Who's with, Kenny? That's the, Mitch, Kenny was the doorman. Now he's on Storage Wars. Kenny, Kenny do it. The big mm. black guy in uh, Storage the, the Wars. Big, Geechee. Like, like he boy. had problems mentally? No, 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 no. He's he's like born in a fucking treehouse in the woods of Louisiana. Like, look here, he calls me junkie. Look here, junkie. Holler, nigga, man. For you. Like Robin Harris, like yeah. Tower Two. Like, right, right. go doing the dialogue of the fucking kids at Disneyland. Right. <laughs> like, wait, what? I'm at the Laugh Factory, and the, but there was no joke. These Harbor Heights, res- I respect the set. Mexican Mafia dudes come rolling in. And I had a Rottweiler, and she was under that little ass table in the lobby. And they're just waiting in line to go in. They're in that little ante room. Right. And there's one, they're just fucking bombed, hammered. And this guy just kicks my fucking front kick, bang, just kicks my Rottweiler in the skull. And she was a real sweet dog. She wasn't like an attack dog. Right. And I'm like, what the fuck is your problem? And they pull this kid out, his own friends. This dude must have had two strikes because the speed with which they were like, you, like the Sandman right. didn't even stretch. They just yoked his ass out. And I'm like, yeah, fuck you, fuck your mama, fuck you, and fuck you. And they're like, we're leaving, we're leaving. And I go, and fuck your set. And they all go, what? And they all just come, like the tide, it went out. Right. And it just came back, and it was on. It was just fucking on. It was me and Kenny versus four dudes. Wow. Uh, Turns out they were on PCP. So the two, three dudes. So the two dudes don't really want to fight. They still kind of want to get that guy out of here. Right. And for a very good reason. This guy didn't feel a fucking thing. Kenny Crosley was a linebacker at K State, Kansas State. He was 250, six foot 250, just fucking canned hams for fish, like ba 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 ba. And the guy goes, You fucking nigger? You fucking nigger? And Kenny at one point picked up the valet stanchion, and I go, Five years, bro. Five years. Mm. Five years. And he goes, I love you, junkie. <laughs> Put the thing down. He goes, Get his ass up, motherfucking man. Wow. So I hit this guy. From here, from his chin to between his eyebrows for 
20 straight minutes. Just, bada, bada, bada. He goes, fucking me, fucking me. Mm. I'm like, it went from like, this is amazing to this is a horror movie. Right. Like nothing. <laughs> it, it was like he was just blinking. Right. Nothing. And I remember then Ralphie May showed up. Jamie's in there like he's going to mix it up. Like, look, at, come on, buddy. Ralphie with him little ass T-Rex hands. He's <laughs> like, okay, playboy. He's like, you fucking lesbian. <laughs> he up, he left, like, mm. yeah. So I remember he went to grab Ralphie and he missed the curb. And he was looking straight down like this. And with that fucking body shot, that trace, every, best punch I've ever thrown in my life. His fucking chin was pointing to the North Star like, bang. Right. And he just, he just kept coming. And that's why I was like, <gasps> wow. Oh. The cops came after 45 minutes. On like, Sunset? Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's Saturday. All those cars are just at a standstill. And somebody's like, fuck them up. And he walked out into traffic and just punched a fuck. You know how hard you got to hit a fucking passenger side window to shatter it? Mm. He just shattered that shit. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm going to get tired and die. That's the last time I wore flip-flops in my life. Because <laughs> at one point... That's that dude, the message. That guy was... It is the message. I'm realizing it now. I've had that story holstered for a long time. Because at one point, right after the valet stanchion, he went down again. And I just went, all right, this is over. I'm just going to crack this. F- no, fuck, not with right, no shoe on, right, I hate. Right, right, Not with no shoe, I'm not. Yeah, nope, nope. I, wow. Just like these, the shower shoes, the yeah, Jordan yeah, shower yeah, shoes. Yeah, yeah. And every time I went to just go like right here and then you're like, gang, like we're done. Nope. Mm. Never in my life have I worn shower shoes unless I was walking onto a wrestling mat or off a wrestling mat mm. since that day. So yeah, and once I was at Cal and this Chinese lady goes, she wouldn't give me my check. She goes, it was kind of racist. I go, how was that racist? She goes, well, I like the black kid outside the grocery store. I go, yeah. She goes, like, why do you have to be black? I go, because he was black. Mm. She goes, but if he was white, wouldn't have said he was white. I go, sweetheart, <clears throat> 11% of the population is black. 12% of the population is black, maybe. So I'm white. If I see a black guy, he's an outlier. People stare at black guys in the store because they haven't seen one in four days. Mm-hmm. Not like he's going to steal all the time. Right. It's like, oh, wow, look. It is a- you see a black guy in a game show, you root for him. You never see it. Yeah. Black comedy night. Where the fuck do all the comics, black comics, do spots? All of a sudden on Monday, on Chocolate Monday and fucking ooh, Voodoo Sunday, right, it's Voodoo just Sunday. fucking, there's 17, and they're all great comics. I'm like, where the fuck are these guys doing spots? So, it, like, if, if black guys at Watts Tower, if a white guy ran down the street, they'd be like, remember that that white dude just ran down the street? Because right. I'm the outlier. Right, right. Him at the black church, they're like, who the fuck is this guy? Right. She, and then she wouldn't give me the check, but that wasn't a fight. That was just some nerdy Chinese lady. That was a really long answer. Yeah. I'm exhausted. Andy, take it. <laughs> How do you feel about I, I the Puerto not, Ricans? I, I like Puerto Ricans. I, I, wonder, I, I, got, I got a little question for you, though. I, sure. It's just funny to me, I, and I have to ask you, because when he said we're going to come here, I said I have to ask him this question. It is eight and a half inches. Now, yeah. it, uh, and, okay, eight and a half inches, and on your rider, do you still have to get a humidifier and extra socks? <clears throat> yeah. Did he do that? Yeah. Yeah. What is it, a humidifier? So and I don't lose my voice. Yeah. Uh-huh. And a pair of white socks. Holy shit, what's the socks for? Right. I'm glad you asked. People think it's like green M&M. So like, I didn't know what green M&M's meant, but apparently... Like it's bands, brown M&M's actually for People put like, I don't want all the brown M&M's yeah. removed, and they only do it to see if you read the rider. Because they don't have to check anything else if, there's, if the brown M&M's right. are gone. That meant they followed the rider. But I don't do it to fuck with anybody. I don't fuck with anybody in the world ever, unless it's like my best friends, and I tell them like, here, let's get in the car, and then I go, by the way, it's not my car. That's my best joke. <laughs> This, next time you're like, like he don't know what kind of, I don't know if he knows what kind of car you drive. Mm-hmm. He does. Yeah. All right. Well, you don't know what kind of car I drive. No. So like we leave here and I just go like a convertible. And I go, yeah. and then as you get into the car, I go, fuck, I forgot my fucking wallet. I'll be right back. And then when I get all the way across the lot. I go, it's not my car. Sure. <laughs> People forget how to get out of cars. That's funny. So uh, what was I even talking? Oh, because right before you go on stage, you put on. The socks and they're brand new, so they're like all bouncy, and you just feel good. good. Yeah, so it's just a feel good thing. Feels nice. I feel fresh. Remember, you little kid, you're like, no, I'm wearing these shoes out. Well, I I I I buy. Well, yeah, I buy new socks. Like before, I, well, I come up to first the first time. That first, yeah, day but now that. as I'm older, that kind of shit means something to me. No, and they kind of touch snug on your leg a little bit. Yeah, no, no. I take a shower. I, I play my game. I smoke my weed. It ain't the 1700s. On. I'm not wearing like big ass yeah. socks. No, 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 no. But they know they they an attorney in the Mayflower. No, the reason I even asked you this is because. I was always excited when you were coming because I would get a new humidifier every year. I would just take your humidifier. <laughs> what about Once the he's done, you just take it? I would take the humidifier. Oh, wow. Isn't it, it weird that not every green room has a humidifier already in it? No. They don't. I said, isn't it weird? Oh, oh I, I, why would it have it? Because it's good for your voice. voice. We talk for an hour straight. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have thought that. Like, they always have green tea, throat coat tea. <laughs> like, I don't want you know caffeine. I mean? 
Oh, I, the I have cocaine for that. Oh, well, and crack. Well, there we go. And that pee funk I be smoking. <sighs> you know, I never seen cocaine. You, for real? Never. Never, never seen never it. Never seen. Never seen. <laughs> it. All the places that you've been, no one's ever just had it out. No. Well, they got to be in my fucking room. They're not taking it out in line. But nobody's ever offered a fan. AJ. No. No. It's a weed world, man. It is a weed world, though. Shit. And if I was at a party and somebody said, hey, we're doing bumps in the back. I just got up and I left the fucking party because none of these assholes are going to make the newspaper. Mm. So I'm like, Jay Moore arrested at a fucking frat party with an underage girl. Like, I didn't, I didn't know anybody else was in the house. You, you still with Barry Katz? No. No. Mm-mm. Holy shit, I thought you were the last Mohican, man. I was. Yeah. I was. But just after my divorce, I just, I just cleared the decks. I fired my personal appearance agent, my agent, my next agent. But did he do something agent. wrong? No. No, you just wanted to clean I love house? Barry very much. He's like a father. Do you do more. Barry? Do you do Barry? I do the Barry. Okay. It's it's that uh, okay. Fr- Frank Caliendo does a pretty decent. Frank Caliendo. Yeah. Aries, I have a gig for you. So. Aries, I have a. It gig. shoots in Chongqing, China. <laughs> That's great. It pays five. Chongqing. That's some shit he would say. <laughs> well, it's a province. It's in, <laughs> Jesus, man. It's in eastern China. It's like a farming rural community. I don't know. But it's a fucking place, for real. But it pays $500,000 a month. They want you there for two months to do stand-up on the Great Wall of China. Every media outlet's going to cover it. You're the first comedian. They had tapes of every comedian that's ever lived. (laughs) They had every comedian. They could have had fucking Seinfeld. They could have had Bill Burr. They could have had... God, I wish I knew who the fuck this was. (laughs) They could have had anybody. And they wanted you, Aries. Do you want the gig? That's fucking great. You have to say yes. Yes. It's canceled. <laughs> Actually, I just got it back for more money. It's $4 million. But before I say yes, can you... Aries, have you ever flown a Learjet? Oh, that's great. You've never flown a Learjet? Oh, I'll tell him. Dude, you know what? That reminds me. Like, oh, I always God. wish now Bobby Slayton uh, was bigger because that was one of the first impressions I ever did. Of Slayton? Bobby Slayton when I was just coming up. Just make it up. like some dude you came up with. Like, you know, I was coming to get a bank. Let me do this. I'm going to be a little comedy. You know, I, wow. I'm, I'm funny to all the black guys that think they do comedy. You know, I've been doing it the whole time. You know, I, 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 I tell my wife. You know, so. I, it's, it's, I, love, I love it. It's, it's as good as your Paul Mooney. Thank you, sir. You know, like your mom being a jazz singer, like she's yeah. hanging up with all these weird dudes. Yeah. Like there's always that one guy that's been. Just, you're not even sure if he's alive, but the yeah. keyboards are awake. He's like, hey, uh, hey, you just slide him in like to some yeah. weird character. I'm not going to tell you to do fucking comedy. I'll tell Andy how to do comedy. Listen, man, I, and I didn't even do Paul. I stand with Israel, okay? I, uh, okay. I didn't even really do, do Paul justice because if I did, I was supposed to take the mic out. All them niggas are real, homie. Yeah, you see, well, this is really, is the listener needs to know this. Oh. The impression just got twofold better because you're doing that. Like, I can't do Pacino sitting down. Right. If I, and like the Keitel stuff to do sitting down. Like, if right. I stood up. It's like this. You're still. You're, wow, wow. All, all, I'm, all these niggas know what's real, nigga. Shit. Comedi- 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 comedians, the know, comedians know what's real. All these niggas know what's real. All these white people. You leave the clubs because you don't <laughs> like the truth, nigga. It's too much truth. White people will tell you, "Who is this nigga with all this rage?" It's not rage. You motherfuckers were rage when you killed all the niggas and hung them from trees. What about that shit? It's so good. The fucking little Shirley Temple hands. Yeah. Yeah. He had that one bit about like, but he wanted the nigga news. Yeah. And he goes, I want nigga news. I can't do the impression at all. He goes, I'm talking. I just, I remember I was 16 years old in my parents' house and I woke my father up going, Aah! he goes, I'm talking tap dancing pancakes. Oh, dude. I, you the know nigga what? news. Right, right, right. One of my favorites was 1 800 1 800 blame a nigga. If something goes wrong, you call, you go, oh, blame a nigga. Someone robbed me. It was a nigga did it. 1-800, blame a nigga. I say nigga a million times a day. It makes my teeth white. Nigga, 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 nigga. <laughs> That's such a great line. Oh, man. It makes yeah. my teeth white. It's one of the best lines. Yeah, I'd yeah. forgotten about him. It's such a great line. It uh, makes my teeth white. Oh. So, Aries and Andy have a podcast. Subscribe to it and leave a review. Look, let's say you don't ever listen to the damn thing. Please don't listen to the damn thing. There were no commercials here. There's a Patreon page. If you feel like it, go ahead. What are you going to do? Well, I'm not going to fucking ask you for money. Let me ask you a question, Jay. I'm not going to do squatty potty 
flowers, berries, things. Because it's like, I don't need that money. That's their money. It's somebody, I'm not getting a piece. It's well, let me, my let, show. Let me, let me ask I don't you want a question. fucking piece. Jay, let me ask you a question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a fucking piece. Bush. Um, how, do, you know, do you keep track of how many listeners you guys have? Do we you got know? a million subscribers. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. Jesus Christ. But, I mean, probably 500,000 of them haven't listened in four years. <laughs> but that's what I'm telling the people. Just go to Spears and Steinberg, the Jew and the Jerk. Hit subscribe, five star review, Damn. and then if you never even listen to it because you're too busy listening to uh, you know the other one or five or ten, it's hard to crack that cycle. But and the motherfucker is available on Spotify, iTunes, Spearsburg.com, and Google Play. God damn it, Spearsburg.com. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, got our, we did our own. Yeah. Spearsburg.com, you guys have cracked the code. Listen, yeah. before we go, That's I have EA, to ask because like I, I almost got away from it, uh, but I want to get back to the impressions thing real quick. How sick of you, are you of people asking you to do walking? And that before man. you answer, before you mm-hmm. answer, because uh, that's why I said a million motherfuckers do walking. But I think. Yeah, now. I, I think now, <laughs> but I think there are people who go, listen, you can't copyright an impression, but Caliendo is Madden. Jay is fucking walking. People will go, Aries is Shaq. I don't give a fuck. Who else does it? Certain comics you just go. So much so that if anybody else does it, you go, man, you doing Jay Moore doing walking. Man, you doing Frank doing Madden. I like Frank's fucking John Gruden. That bugs me. And his De Niro, yeah, the eyes. His De Niro's really good because he picked up that weird little side list. I don't know, but the face, though, was maybe now. But he's but, got like a little lisp off to the side, a little bit. I can't even yeah. his, his, his Denzel. He Andy. could just lick, lick his lips and he gets Denzel. Well, you know, Denzel's got the mouth thing now. Like, I love a Denzel. You know, these person. characters. Jay Farrell's Denzel makes me Right, mad. but these characters, they become uh, cartoonish. Do the impression, and, stupid. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, that's what we talking about. Hey, look. Jake. All right, that's what we're talking about, Jake. All right, you want to go to jail or you want to go home? All right, we're talking about justice. All right, everybody's got a right to a fair shake. Everybody's got a right to a fair trial. Mm-hmm. Mm. He's the mouth now. I love making a decision. Yeah, <laughs> right, that's right. That's a lot. And training day, <clears throat> that's the sentence that makes me go, oh, you're the greatest. All right, of make all. a decision. Left you got to right. make a decision, Jake. Left or right? Which not? If he's gonna shoot oh one no! Guy, yeah, wait, wait, wait! One of the guys balling. Right, 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 make right. a decision. This is my newspaper. It's ninety percent bullshit, but I read it because it entertains me, and you won't let me read it. So go ahead, tell me a story. All right, you got pockets, right? To the left and to the right of, of money inside. <laughs> Pay the bill. Just <laughs> fucking intense, man. This ain't check. Is this chess? This chess. He's my friend because I knew his first name. Because he knew my name? That's such, my first name. Like, such good lines. Oh, my goodness. Wait, my friend. Why? Because I knew his first name? Roger so dope the kids. The world is a better place without him. What, 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 what you think we're going to do? Just roll up in there, surprise. You're arrest. You're under arrest. Huh? Macy Gray, I want to see that Warren. <laughs> yeah. He got I'm glad that bitch is in, 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 in no more movies. I want to see that Warren. She she knew it was a food game. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. He had Chinese menu. For, he's like, I got a warrant for you. <laughs> the fucking right. House of Lim fucking Chinese yeah. restaurant. Ari Spears. And, you know, the walking I never get tired of doing because it's come full circle where I'm able to see, like, people just love the impression. What, what's the key to that, man? Well, Ari's, if that's your real name, one syllable words, like, no, become two syllables. Great. No. You can't do that. You can do what you want, put your mind to. Very few people do the whisper when they do the impression. Make a decision. <laughs> Let me tell you, Greg Benson was in Tampa, and he did the smartest thing I've ever seen. It was so brilliant because for somebody who couldn't do a walk-in, Whoa. He, he did one thing where you went, that's funny. He goes, here's my impression of walking, finding out that his flight has been canceled. Why? <laughs> that was it. Why? <laughs> and that was it. And I went for somebody that can't do walking. Just to do that moment was fucking brilliant. I love it. And now I like finding a home for it. And like, like I was doing this bit for what I did it once. It wasn't a while, but it's too hacky for me. Like, if you just mixed famous parts, like Kaitel is in the boathouse, and you know, uh, um, in the Godfather, like all day long, San Fredo to run some Mickey Mouse nightclub. That is f- fucking Send Fredo to pick somebody up at the goddamn airport. I'm not dumb. I'm smart. Not like people think. And then it was like Christopher Walken as Pacino, like, 
that's the way Pop wanted it. But I'm like, Mm-mm. on stage, I'm like, this is fucking bullshit. So instead, like guys that have great one line in a movie, you just get like the biggest fucking guy, like uh, uh, Anthony and Goodfellas, like when Pesci's going like, funny how, like a fucking clown, I fucking hate to amuse you. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm a little fucked up. Maybe I had too much to drink. No, I don't know what you fucking said. What'd you say? Hey, Tommy, you got it all wrong. <laughs> He's a big boy, Anthony. He knows what the fuck that's the only thing the guy says. Yeah, table. yeah, yeah. Just put like a giant star in there. That's fucking crazy. Wrap this up after. I'll, let me do a proper outro. Well, let me, before go. you go, one more thing, and I promise oh, okay. I'm done. Um, I've never heard you do Pacino, man, because I do Pacino. Well, <laughs> what are you, chewing tobacco? What is this? Is that why you have fucking black lips? Who are you, Aries? You're a fucking child. Chicago, New Brunswick, New Jersey, by way of fucking Manhattan. How big was that house? It's a fucking big piece of property. I can't see when I sat down and I lost it. I have where I live now. Wow. In the valley. Porter Ranch. San Bernardino. A lot, of, a lot of Mexicans. Feels good. Wake up in the morning. There's the sun. The word good is perfect. good. You just did it better than I could ever do. It feels good. Well, you know that you know. It, oh, it, on Instagram, I do Coach Pacino, and it's he's the Trailblazers coach. Right after like random Trailblazers games, yeah. I'd be like, "Where the fuck is Evan Turner? How many fouls does CJ have? Three. That's not good. This guy should be on the bench. He's not that fucking good. Sit down, Wade. You're fucking G League at best. <laughs> if you get to the next level, you got to play harder. You got to put your all in. Who? Evan Turner, you know what the next level is? 14 fucking points for you. <laughs> That's the next level. Get a fucking triple double here. <laughs> How about a fucking double double? I would settle for a single double, triple, single. Just fucking do something. Fill a fucking stat line. I can't do it sitting like this. Uh-huh. I sound like fucking Pesci Kaitel or something. Dude, like- okay, for, for me. This is the win for me right now. I know you told me I got to be positive in my head and I got to put the right. This right here. Here the fuck he goes amazing. again. Amazing. You got to believe, kid. What does that have to do with being positive? What the fuck is he talking you about? You got to believe. Justin, I have a teacup York in his lap. The What's man it? told you trust your fucking rifle. Get Justin a nice bowl of broth before he dies of fucking AIDS holding a York. <laughs> <laughs> Get him a robe and some broth. Are you okay, Justin? How's the AZT? Who knows? Who is this guy? Sits on the couch all day petting dogs. I don't have a dog. He's got a dog. Hoorah. Hoorah. Um, insomnia. I love uh, when he's on the fucking little ferry with Robin Williams. Robin Williams yeah. is a serial killer. He goes, I'm not who you think I am. I think you're a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's my favorite. Guys like you are my job. You think you're different because you're painted a fucking nails? Come on. You're about as interesting to me as a black toilet is to a fucking plumber. I just spit all over my head. As you got lower, it, would re- it really was. Because he hasn't slept in fucking yeah, seven days Jesus. at that point. He was like, I think you're a piece Jesus. of shit. And That's he, fucking. Just because you're fucking circumcised doesn't mean you're from the Holy Land chosen people time. Who? Uh, how do you feel? Is that all you people ever think about? Uh, yeah, so let me do a proper outro. So, uh, Ari- by the way, Aries. Yes, sir. Seeing you on that plane, yes. you just look chill. You rolled my right shoulder, just two OGs in first class, hey, just man. balling. Hey, I, man. It was the perfect amount of time. Andy, you just go get a pizza or something for real quick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was, I thought about this about a week ago. It was the perfect amount of, hey, what's up? Oh, shit. Where, like, not where you're going. Obviously, we're going to the same place. We're on a fucking plane. And then the perfect dismount. At one point, I had the guy next to you hand you my number. Yeah. And that guy was like, exci- that's what fired me up. Right, right. That guy was excited yeah. that we were connecting. Yeah, yeah. Just some dude, some white cat is just like, no, I'll, I'll give it to him. I'll give it to him. He was like, really, like, Jay Moore and Harry Spears are like, dude, I, I, listen, I'm a did, part of this. I was, like, was. I was like a giddy schoolgirl. I, I texted him immediately and was like, yo, Jay just said we could be on his podcast. Yeah. So I was like, yo, that was, it was the business, man. And it was just. It's, it's so amazing when you're a comedian. You don't see somebody for years, and it's like they just came in from the dining room. Yeah. Like, you just went in there and macaroni and cheese and came back out after you yeah, checked yeah, out. It's yeah. like, hey, man. Oh, shit. <laughs> Look who's back. You know? Yeah. So I love you, brother. Brother, same here, that's man. That's what we said on the plane, too. In front of grown-ass men, we were just like, I love you. I love you, too. Yeah, man. love wins. We Andy, like- I like you. I like the way your hair smells. <laughs> Thanks, man. 
I washed it before I left Phoenix. Why are you going to talk so much, Eddie? Jesus. Jeez, learn to pipe down and listen. Who are you, Melville? <laughs> Jesus. I don't know who that became at the end. Bob fucking Newhart. Bob Newhart. Nobody knows this. Had no legs. <laughs> God, that fucking No guy legs. Down, and he's oh. the third man to walk in space. Not on the moon. Spacewalk. Played by Chris Isaac. From there to the moon. Look it up. If you guys would have done this on the plane, everyone would have shit their pants right there on the plane. I would have thought we were fucking nuts. <laughs> Turn off my phone. Why? You can't land the fucking plane if I'm texting my baby's mama? <laughs> what kind of fucking airline is this? Why do they keep letting Coach come to first class? There's a reason for the curtain. <laughs> Close it. Stay Call in, the fucking car and Stay in it. your fucking place. <laughs> Let me get this straight. I can play fucking blackjack in the seat in front of me. But I got to go to airplane mode so the fucking wheels work. That's what you're fucking telling me. And you still Why don't you can't suck carry my balls? Water. What was that, Al? Still can't carry fucking water. You haven't figured this out yet? How about cologne and toothpaste? <laughs> Shit. What need- are we, fucking gypsies? Jesus. You want me to smell like a flower's farted? I don't know what that means. Put your name on it. Yeah, where the fuck have we here? These motherfuckers all throwing no roads. He guys with a bad dream, better not sleep. Take a nose, oh, do some blow. Oh shit, what the hell have we done? It's alive and it's hungry as fuck. Better hide all the sides of the dough, but it's out of my control. You were shit out of luck. I don't wanna be unfair, but the pair we got beat that weak shit you got. Good spot with that new box. Who's right? Good squad with our new ones. I don't wanna sound unkind, but the sounds I make are the sounds of the hounds that I'm howling. Under your bed, I'm here growling. Same time under the blanket, you're cowing. Cowing like cowards, cowing on concrete showers and Rikers Island. Victims, we the wolves is wild and we all. Smiling that sights of violence. Acting brave and courageous ain't advantageous for health and